today. I super, uh, super appreciate it. Are, are you in Barcelona? Yeah, so I'm, um, I'm one of I'm, uh, Dr. Andres Cardenas, and uh, I'm at the University of Barcelona, Hospital Clinic Barcelona, where I'm a consultant physician, and uh, I work here uh, seeing patients uh, with GI and liver problems. Awesome. Hey, well, thank you. So the way that I got a hold of you was through uh, someone who uses this website that I run with people for UC, and they were interested in finding a gastro doctor in Spain for their son who's going to be on a study abroad type thing. And anyways, they found you, told me they, that the son was real happier. I guess I don't really actually know any of the details, and that's fine. But in reading a little bit about you, you had – and you mentioned that you have a lot of experience with PSC, primary, I'll try to pronounce this, sclerosing cholangitis. Is that how you do it? Yes, that, that's, that's correct. It's, it's called primary sclerosing cholangitis. So basically, um, I, I actually uh, trained in the United States. I trained at, uh, in Boston at Beth Israel Deaconess Medical Center. And uh, during my training in, in gastroenterology, I did a fellowship on liver disease and transplant hepatology. And I practice uh, basically uh, transplant hepatology, and I also do procedures in patients that have liver disease. So uh, primary sclerosing cholangitis is a disease that can occur very, very commonly in patients that have ulcerative colitis. So about uh, of all the patients that have primary sclerosing cholangitis, which I'll describe what it is, about 80% of them have ulcerative colitis. Wow. So it's very common for somebody that has this uh, manifestation of, of uh, uh, liver disease to have ulcerative colitis. So basically, uh, patients with ulcerative colitis, when they present, they can have a, an array of symptoms, as you probably know. They can have bloody diarrhea. They can have change in bowel habit. They can have anemia, abdominal pain. But uh, some of them can actually also on top of having those symptoms, have a disease that affects the bile ducts of the basically. So what it is is that the bile ducts of the liver, which are uh, basically uh, what drain the liver into the intestine, uh, can get inflamed. And we really don't know the clear, clear cause, but it is associated with the same causes as uh, ulcerative colitis. So it's Seems to have may have an autoimmune uh, uh, component, okay. Uh, but in reality, we really don't know what triggers the inflammation of the bile tree. So it's like inside the liver you have the branches, and outside the liver you have basically the trunk of the tree that basically drains into the uh, duodenum or small bowel and drains bile. So you can actually have inflammation of that bile tree. And uh, the excretion of bile can be, can be compromised. So okay, you can have sort of buildup of bile and what we call this. And it actually can affect the liver inside and outside the liver. And it's, as I said before, extremely common to have PSC and ulcerative colitis at the same time. Wow. And can you give an idea of patients that have ulcerative of colitis that have been diagnosed with ulcerative colitis, what percentage, if it's possible, often let's say would have as well PSC? Yeah, that's a good, that's a good question because uh, up to five to 7% of patients with ulcerative colitis have risk of developing primary sclerosis and cholangitis. So it's not that all, all the patients that have ulcerative colitis have PSC, it's a very small proportion. So it's about five to seven percent, but, but that is why all our patients that have ulcerative colitis, we do some regular tests, uh, including blood tests that measure liver function. Okay. Okay. And so down to the liver at some point, just to check and make sure they don't they don't develop it, because it's a very silent disease, and sometimes people with ulcerative colitis don't have any symptoms, but with time we can detect changes in liver tests. And when it develops, some patients actually have what, uh, a lot of itching and have their, their skin can actually turn yellow. So they can have jaundice. But that's at very advanced Okay. So 
as common as ulcerative awesome colitis, uh, we always want to check and make sure that patients don't develop as during the cursor of the disease. Gotcha. So if you were going to maybe give some advice or just ideas for patients that do have ulcerative colitis, what would be some of the classic symptoms that might develop at an early stage or maybe at a progressed stage of having PSC as well? If, you know, if someone's not diagnosed, misdiagnosed or undiagnosed, what types of signs would you, you know, say would be things to look out for? Yes, that's a, that's. Thank you for your question. So, if if you have ulcerative colitis, uh, most of the symptoms that people and patients will look for is changes in their bowel habit, and they make sure they don't have bloody stools. But other symptoms that they should watch out for is extreme fatigue is a, is a problem that could be associated with primary sclerosis and cholangitis. Uh, if you have itching in your skin and you're all constantly scratching your skin. If your urine turns dark, your stools or balls become yellow or your skin becomes yellow. That's, those are all alarm features that indicate that bile of the liver is not getting excreted properly and it's building up in your So the early signs uh, sometimes are very difficult to pick up. And sometimes people just complain of fatigue and some itching. But by the time they have yellow skin or dark urine or pale stools, the disease has advanced significantly. So that's why we always screen while uh, during the course of the disease, patients should be screened for PSC and they do that. And we do that by doing blood work, liver tests. And usually we start with an abdominal ultrasound. Gotcha, excellent. And can you give some ideas as to what are the common treatments for PSC and what is the prognosis? What are maybe the typical ages where people are diagnosed with PSC? Those types of ideas. Okay. Yeah. So usually uh, patients with PSC can be diagnosed at two, uh, two uh, times uh, uh, during their disease. Sometimes when they're young, uh, you know, a lot of people do a PSC at, when they're teenagers or in their early 20s. Okay. Uh, and if that's the case, we usually um, uh, look at patients that either develop it uh, in the early age, but the mean age at diagnosis is usually between 40 and 45 years old. Okay. okay. Uh, when it's present and we, we, de we detect PSC, the first thing we want to do is make sure there's nothing else going on in the liver. So we usually do an MRI of the liver to look at specific changes inside the liver, look at the bile ducts inside the liver and outside the liver. And once we confirm that the changes, which are like uh, uh, the, the bile tree uh, sort of becomes inflamed and looks like a, uh, a lot of uh, a bedding. Uh, so basically you have small strictures in the bile ducts. And once we diagnose it and we confirm the diagnosis, then at that point we have to think about what's the best of therapy. Unfortunately, they're not very, specific therapies for PSC. One of the most common uh, treatments we use is ursodiol, which is a, a, a medication that makes your bile sort of more uh, fluid and liquid, so it drains easier. But the studies that have looked at ursodiol or ursachol uh, have shown that although they improve your liver enzymes, the outcome uh, doesn't really improve. So uh, what we actually look for is that we have to make sure that patients, if they're uh, diagnosed with this, we have to be uh, monitoring them very, very closely. We may give them ursodiol, which may improve their liver enzymes, but doesn't really improve the overall outcome of these patients. So we watch for signs of alarm. Uh, we Once they develop it, we have to make sure they don't get an infection from this. So sometimes if they develop fever, uh, they'll need an antibiotic. We often have to make sure that uh, some of these patients have well, bile duct stones or stones in the gallbladder or stones outside the gallbladder, and these need to be taken out. We also want to make sure that don't, they don't develop a, uh, a, a stricture, a, a large stricture in the bile duct that can actually block their bile duct. And we always, always, always look for the, 
the fact that this disease, although very uncommon, can develop uh, some type of bile cancer or bile duct cancer in, the, in, in some patients. So very, very uncommonly, uh, PSC can actually, uh, with time, be a risk factor for what we call cholangiocarcinoma or cancer of the bile ducts. Wow. Okay. Thank you so much for all of that so information. So uh, ultimately, if, if, if people end up having problems related to, to a PSC and sometimes they can develop chronic liver disease from this, the best option for these patients, obviously, once they develop established disease, the inflammation of the bile ducts, uh, many patients will require a liver transplant. So liver transplantation is the ultimate treatment for these patients if they meet the criteria. Got it. And how successful, I mean, what types of outcomes would you expect from a successful operation slash transplant of the liver for one of these patients? What can, what can be expected afterwards? No, the, the expectation is fantastic. I mean, if, 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 this will have uh, developed chronic liver disease, and, there's, and their liver becomes hard, and they have problems with cirrhosis, which will change in the new liver. The outcomes are excellent. So we're talking about the fact uh, that you get 